नमस्कार लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई एम पूजा योर होस्ट फ्रॉम आई बी ए एंड आई एम डिलाइटेड टू वेलकम यू ऑल टू द आई बी ए आई बी फेट कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन द थीम ऑफ कॉन्टेम्प्रेरी इश्यूज इन बैंकिंग इट्स माई प्लेजर टू वेलकम मिस्टर एम वी राव चेयरमैन आई बी ए मिस अयाको सुवा चेयर आई बी फेट मिस्टर सुनील मेहता चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव आई बी ए एंड मिस हैज वेज मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर आई बी फेट टू ज्वाइन एस ऑन द डाइस प्लीज Thank you, dignitaries. Before we move ahead, going by the Indian tradition to invoke the divine blessings, we will now have the ceremonial lighting of the traditional lamp. I would like to request all dignitaries on the dais to proceed for lighting the lamps. thank you dignitaries now i would like to request the chairman iba and mdnco central bank of india to please give the welcome address yeah madam suwa chair international banking federation mr sunil mehta chief executive iba distinguished members of banking fraternity board members of ib fed ladies and gentlemen good morning and uh, very warm welcome to all of you ib fed conference based on the theme contemporary issues in banking this conference is a part of uh, overall program curated by iba which is hosting the ib fed board meeting this time in india members from 12 banking associations across the world are here today to be a part of this event international banking federation which was formed in 2004 represent the combined views of various national banking associations and has since done extensive work in the areas of prudential regulation international and cross border taxation environment concerns financial markets developments and digital transformations ib fed is constantly engaged with global standard setters like basel committee financial action task force international organization of securities commission financial security stability board etc iba became an associate member of ib fed in 2007 which helped us to have platform where we could interact with other banking associations our engagements with ib fed have grown over a period of time mutually benefiting each other last friday gdp numbers for india was released in the fourth quarter of the last financial year india's gdp grew by 7.8% on yoy showcasing a continued robust performance 
For the entire financial year of the 24, GDP grew by 8.2%. The GDP numbers are quite encouraging. Since the growth prospects for the domestic economy is looking up, the banks in India will have to play a key role in supporting growth of the country. Since banks are the major source of financial intermediation in India, they have to play a key role ensuring financial resources are mobilized for the productive sectors of the economy. On the other hand, banks have to build their own resilience internally and also to manage external shocks arising out of uncertainty, geopolitical tensions, vagaries of weather. As you are aware, geopolitical tensions are increasing than before. These issues have economic impact either directly or indirectly across the world as we are operating in a highly integrated economy. There is structural uncertainty, namely the disruption to many business models brought about by technological change, the rapidly changing nature of work, devastating effects of climate change, and shifts in consumer preferences. Under these circumstances, steering the economy by the regulators and policymakers and navigating the institutions like banks to remain agile and strong are extremely important for, all, for overall financial stability. As you all know, the uncertainty surrounding the landscape cannot be totally mitigated. However, it could be managed by appropriate policy actions and strategies to build resilience so that the shocks could be absorbed and quickly recover from the setbacks and stay in a position to benefit from new opportunities. Today's conference deals with four key areas where banks and financial institutions are focusing for quite some time and would continue to acclimatize with ever-changing, uncertain, and disruptive world. These are essentially critical areas banks and financial institutions have to pay focused attention. First session of the conference deals with the environment-related matters. Our country has embarked on an ambitious journey to achieve net zero emissions by 2070. A critical aspect of this transition is addressing financial emissions, financed emissions, which are the greenhouse gas emissions associated with the investments and lending activities of banks. These emissions often indirect stem from the activities of companies or projects financed by the banks. Substantial climate finance shortfall requires allocating 2.5% of India's annual GDP to green finance. Considering the devastating effects of climate change, we have no choice but to adapt to environment-friendly policies. Against this background, our session on climate finance where experts share their perspectives on mobilizing the resources for sustainable growth would be quite interesting to the participants. As you all know, in a service sectors like banks, customer is the king. Customer service is a key vertical in any banks. Addressing customer grievances and complaints in a time-bound manner is an integral part of customer service. Our session on consumer protection in banking sector examines various issues related to consumer protection in banking in India and around the world. India has made considerable strides in digital payment space. Over the last decade, we have seen maximum innovation in payment space with fintechs that bring with them new ideas that are easy to understand and adopt. Banks are collaborating with them to improve their offerings and fintechs are also benefited by this collaboration. I must also add that Reserve Bank of India is playing a key role to encourage innovation and at the same time, regulations are also being made to ensure that all players in the payment ecosystem have an element of accountability and level playing field. We have session examining the forces driving payment space and the improvements in trade finance due to digitization. I must also add here that without technology and its uses, any discussions on banking will not be complete. Last session will be looking at risk management. I need to highlight the importance of risk management in an increasingly complex and dynamic financial world. This session examines the traditional and new risks that are emerging out of the new developments and innovations happening in the banking services. 
I am sure all these sessions are going to be interesting and insightful to the participants. I am glad to note that some of the IB Fed board members are also participating in the panel discussions, bringing in their experience from different countries. I am sure participants will enjoy the conference and wish you all fruitful conference. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to request Mr. Sunil Mehta to introduce Ms. Ayako Suva, IB Fed Chair, to the participants. A very good morning to all of you. Our great pair in introducing Madam Ayako Suwawa, IB Fed Chair and General Manager, Japanese Banking Association to address the audience. She has been serving as the Chair of the International Banking Federation from 2023. She brings in more than 35 years of experience in banking industry, having worked in different departments of Japanese Banking Association. Her skill encompasses international relations, business development, operations, clearing systems, and public relations. She is Japanese representative for international organizations for standardization and also chairperson of SWIFT user group of Japan. Uh, a big round of applause to welcome Madam Ayako. To you, Madam. Thank you for your warm introduction, Meta-san. And my sincere thanks to Indian Banks Association for hosting this conference today. Good morning, or as we say in Japanese, ohayou gozaimasu. Ohayou gozaimasu. I feel privileged to be a part of this conference organized by the IBA as part of the overall program in connection with the 78th board meeting of the International Banking Federation or the IB Fed. As Rao-san kindly um, explained, introduced, the IB Fed was formed in 2004 to represent the integrated views of its regional and national banking associations. The IB Fed collectively represents more than 18,000 banks, including over two thirds of the largest 1,000 banks around the world. With its worldwide reach, the IB Fed has become one of the key representatives of the global banking industry. The IB Fed strongly believes that banks should play a crucial role in supporting and promoting economic growth, and the capacity of banks to finance the broader economy should be promoted. With these objectives in mind, the IB Fed is actively engaging with international standard setting bodies and global supervisors touching on subject with international dimensions or with an important impacts on our members. These include prudential regulations, AMLCFT, climate change, digital uh, transformation, and governance, just to name a few. I arrived here on Sunday. It's my very first time to visit India. I'm already overwhelmed by the energy and kindness of the people here. Therefore, I'm greatly interested in the development and changes that the local people are bringing into the financial and banking sector in India. I read quite a bit about the rapid progress and dynamic changes in the Indian economy and in the financial arena. However, I've not had many opportunities to gain first-hand knowledge from the experts in the Indian financial sector. I believe I will be able to interact with local bankers and regulators to gain further insight from them during my stay. Actually, I already had some very good opportunities yesterday. I've heard that there are almost 100 people attending this whole day event, which will cover some of the key trends and issues faced by the banks. I'm also glad that some of our IB Fed board members are on the panels to share their perspectives. As the world is becoming more integrated, the developments in any field have a certain degree of similarities across the globe. The banking sector is not an exception. 
The topics that are going to be discussed today illustrates the similarity to the areas that the IBFIT is also focusing on. Furthermore, it illustrates the wide range of issues that all of us who are engaged in the banking sector are facing at the moment. We are going to look at climate change, consumer protection, digitization, and risk management, which are also very important and very universal. As a matter of fact, these issues are some of the top priorities for the IB Fed, as well as for my organization, Japanese Bankers Association. Climate change and the sustainable finance has been on everyone's lips for quite some time, but we are still on the way, struggling to find straightforward solutions. The importance of consumer protection, needless to say, is growing in wide ranges in accordance with the situation in each country. How India has achieved Digital India and India Stack is one of the top interests, not only for me, but also for all other IBFED board members. As we move further into digital transformation, what is much talked about is the generative artificial intelligence. At this point of time, workers are wondering about the potentials and pitfalls of generative AI. Then, Risks surfacing from various angles need to be identified and managed with prudence as changes happen so swiftly. Since the outcome of the uncertainties are not known, the risk management definitely plays a decisive role. I'd like to re-emphasize that all these topics which will be discussed during today's conference are very relevant, not only to bankers and regulators in India, but also to the rest of the world. As we are members of the global community and are interdependent, all these issues have an impact on each and every region, regardless of the different approaches that we are taking. Last but not least, please enjoy this exciting conference organized by my colleagues, the Indian Banks Association, and the discussion with our distinguished speakers and panelists. Once again, I'd like to thank the Indian Banks Association for hosting this conference, and I wish all participants a very insightful event ahead. As we progress through today's conference, I encourage you to keep an open mind and to expand your horizons. Thank you. Arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you, ma'am. With this, may I now request Mr. Sunil Mehta to introduce our chief guest, Mr. Amitabh Kant, G20 Sherpa, Ministry of Economic Affairs, Government of India. You are all pretty well aware that today is the day when Indian parliamentary election results are going to come out and uh, counting has already begun. And as G20 Sherpa and as a very important functionary in the government, I think uh, our chief guest, uh, Mr. Amitabh Kant, was indisposed because he was called by the uh, Prime Minister of Office to for some important activities. So now uh, he could not come in person, but he has conveyed uh, his uh, message. Uh, in a virtual mode, so which we will run uh, just after his introduction. For uh, local people, Amitabh Kant needs no instruction because he was CEO of the uh, Niti Aayog also. But then, uh, as a protocol, I'd like to introduce him to the all the audience. Mr. Amitabh Kant is G20 Sherpa of Ministry of Economic Affairs, Government of India. He is governance reformer and public policy change agent for India, having driven key reforms and initiatives during his tenure as chief executive officer of National Institute for Transforming India, that is Niti Aayog. So Niti Aayog is National Institution for Transforming India. So he headed that position from 2016 to 22, and the secretary of Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion from 2014 to 16. He has been a key driver of flagship national initiatives such as Startup India, Make in India, Incredible India, 
in Kerala, it's God's own country, and the aspirational districts program. These initiatives have repositioned India and the Kerala and have widely been recognized as transformational. As CEO of Niti Ayok, Mr. Kant has driven a vast change and national developmental programs and policies initiatives which catalyze India's social and economic development and have brought about a paradigm shift in the policy making. He is a seasoned bureaucrat uh, and uh, has got a experience in shaping the transformation policies. So uh, we'll get an opportunity to listen to him in virtual mode. So I request to uh, play his video. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. I was looking forward to meeting all of you in person However, due to the election process in Delhi, I'm unable to join you in Mumbai. I've seen the agenda for the conference and it is very interesting and relatable to today's context. I've been requested by IBA, IBA to share my perspectives on an important and relevant topic, digital transformation, benefits and challenges for Indian economy. I congratulate the Indian Banks Association for choosing this topic, which is highly relevant in today's world. Ladies and gentlemen, through leveraging digital public infrastructure, what we term as the DPI and the JAM Trinity, the Jandan Aadhaar Mobile Trinity, India has made decades worth of progress in financial inclusion in just a few years. According to the Bank for International Settlements, India has achieved 47 years of financial inclusion in just nine years with DPI. In 2014, around half of Indians had a bank account. Gender dynamics meant that many women did not possess bank accounts of their own. There was no system in place to connect banks as well, leading to a broken payment system. At the same time, there was also an absence of a comprehensive system to identify beneficiaries for government services and transfers. With Aadhaar, we skipped in digital identities and the beginning of the digital revolution. We skipped the landline era and went straight to mobile phones. And with a concerted effort between 2015 and 2017, we opened more than 52 crore, that's over 520 million bank accounts since the launch of the Prime Minister's Jandhan Yojana. Every second bank account during this period was opened in India. Every second bank account across the world. 55% of the bank accounts opened in the world were opened in India. Through the India stack, based on principles of open API, open standards, and global interoperability, we created an underlying payments layer, which we call the Unified Payment Interface, the UPI. Today, take UPI that processes billions of payments each month. In the past two months, April and March, UPI has processed 13 billion transactions. We do 46% of the real-time fast payments in the world. What is unique about our model is that the platform is owned by the people of India. There is a public interest layer on top of which the private players can innovate and compete. But no monopolies are formed. And therefore, there are different apps competing and innovating. And most critical of them all is that unlike uh, the big tech in which drove innovation in the western part of the world and in China. In India, uh, the data is not owned by the big tech, but the data is owned by the citizens who through a process of techno-economic process actually give uh, permission for the use of the data. But the, take, the data of the citizen remains with the citizen. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the data ownership is with the citizen. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from bank accounts to payment, we moved and several young startups of India actually started providing credit based on the payment history. And then we had another set of startups who using the DPIs then took the stock market to tire two, tire three cities and to the rural area. 
and the boom that we are seeing in stock market is because almost 30% of the stock market is owned by these young startups using DPI. And then we had another set of startups which started providing insurance. And there are young startups which provide insurance in one minute time. So from every transaction takes 30 seconds and getting an insurance policy in India takes less than a minute. And therefore, if you look at it, uh, it's important that we use this DPI to deepen credit. Uh, and that is important. If you look at the credit scenario, the domestic credit to private sector in India is just 50% of GDP. And when you compare it with the global average of 144%, it is meager. Developed countries have ratios ranging from 175% in South Korea to 210% in USA. Ladies and gentlemen, the developed countries in Europe have ratios ranging from 90% to 130% as well. This implies that there is tremendous scope for credit deepening in India, especially for private enterprise. The flexibility afforded by a digital first and technology driven model means that the needs of India's MSMEs can be addressed. MSMEs require small and frequent loans along with flexible repayment terms. Leveraging technologies such as artificial intelligence, machine learning to scale up cash flow based lending to MSMEs is critical. Exploring new lending models such as invoice based lending, point of sale, uh, financing are some avenues which are important to be pursued. Embedded finance allows for the integration of financial services into non-financial products. Many MSMEs are now integrating in the formal economy along with increased use of technology in daily operations, accounting, billing, tax, etc. E-commerce is a pertinent example of this. Together with the Open Credit Enablement Network, OSIN, and the embedded finance, credit access can be scaled up massively in India. Today, we are generating huge amounts of data in India. The goods and services tax processes billions of invoices in a month. Billions of transactions take place every month on UPI. This data can help unlock the next phase in digital lending. As banks and NBFCs have been cooperating through co-lending, banks must increasingly partner with and invest in fintech startups. Fintechs have built up strong capabilities in data analytics artificial intelligence, machine learning, are, and are backed by a robust IT infrastructure. Account aggregators have also been increasing in prominence in recent years. Leveraging their reach together with the innovations in the startup space can further drive credit growth. Technologies such as data analytics, for instance, allow for the creation of alternative credit scores based on cash flows. Further, this can also allow for AI-driven lending models which can offer tailored lending solutions or help in the decision making processes. Generative AI can be leveraged in the customer acquisition processes. Innovative technologies must be leveraged and the expertise of banks in ensuring strong underwriting processes can help achieve sustainable credit growth. At the same time, banks must upgrade technologically. Invest in cybersecurity and data protection mechanisms to ensure the resilience of critical systems and consumer data. The government of India has a vision for 2047 by the time it becomes 100. That is the period of what the Prime Minister has termed as the Amrit Kal, an empowered and inclusive economy. Banks will have to play a critical and a leading role in creating an empowered and an inclusive economy and in making this vision a reality. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We are thankful to our chief guest for the insightful address. May I now request Mr. Sunil Mehta to propose the vote of thanks for the inaugural session. May I request you, sir, to come to the dais. This indeed is a great privilege for me to convey my sincere thanks to our chief guest, 
Mr. Amitabh Kant, who, despite his uh, very busy schedule, could find time to record a video and send it to us for this inaugural session. We know about his role and we have heard his vision. The future growth derived from the use of technology, integrating banking system with the fintechs, and the digital stack being created by the government to be leveraged by all private sector players and India to increase its private lending to meet the aspirations of the economic growth. I think this was very enlightening deliberations and we all could see the national priorities embedded into this deliberation. I'm thankful to the IBFED chair, Mena Ayako, for giving her international perspective and the way the Indian banking industry can take advantage of happenings across the globe because it's a very important program where yesterday while deliberating, our management committee while deliberating with the IBFIT board chair, we could understand the, each other's way of handling the various issues. Some of the people have raised the issues of pick and motor branches and how it is handled in a different because everywhere the digitalization is happening at a very fast pace and how the banks are coping up with those challenges. So sharing those international experiences was very useful for all of us. Similarly about the other topics, and the important issues of ESG framework, which were deliberated and questions were raised and the answers were given. So that uh, thing has provided us a platform for peer-to-peer -peer learning. And thanks to uh, the uh, IB Fed in general and uh, chair in particular for accepting our invitation and uh, coming here for the board meeting, which has provided us this opportunity. So thank you, madam, uh, for uh, not only your inaugural address, but facilitating the entire uh, board meeting and this program at uh, uh, Mumbai. I think uh, no program in IBA can complete without the active involvement of the chairman of IBA. And I'm thankful to Mr. M. V. Rao, chairman IBA, for not only giving his uh, uh, entire context setting and uh, telling the day's uh, event, how the things will process, but also encouraging the entire IBA team uh, in organizing this event. Thank you for uh, uh, that support. I'm equally thankful to all the IB board, uh, board members who are present here, my management committee members, my senior fellow bankers for making this event an important event by their participation. Thank you all for your presence here and uh, I hope the today's deliberation will be very thought provoking and will provide us a future roadmap for designing our strategies to be relevant in the fast-changing financial world. Thank you all for your presence here. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take 10 minutes break for tea and coffee before we start the first panel discussion. <laughs> 